Everybody, it's Chris from Prepare My 101. We got another gauntlet review for you today. Uh, this one is the Condor Woodlaw. It is uh, about it's about in the $55 range, bushcraft knife. But this is everyone knows about the bush lore and the Frontier first. This one's actually been around for a while, and for people actually wanting to practice bushcraft, this is pretty much a Mark One Mod Zero bushcraft knife so me and will are going to check this out today so don't go away so this knife's already been through uh, several channels in the gauntlet uh, so what are we going to do with it i basically what i want to do me and will is just kind of look at it we're very good at breaking down these knives uh, what you need to know as far as is this a right knife for you or not this is what I would call a straight-up bushcraft knife it's not a survival knife it's not a big knife it's not something you're gonna do a lot of you're not gonna chop with it you're not gonna do a lot of heavy batoning with it but it's got the round broomstick handle to do a lot of your wood crafting type stuff so maybe I would call it a woodcraft knife more than a bushcraft knife we run into problems with labels. Labels just kind of get everybody thinking about one certain way. But I do, right off the bat, what I like about this over the last one that we reviewed for the gauntlet, which was the Frontier, or it was, no, it was the Final Frontier, is this one does not have heavy black uh, traction coating on it. It's just kind of blued on the side. Very simple. It does have nice micarta handles, which you could smooth out a little bit more yourself or uh, take some sort of Dremel tool, add some extra traction to it. Typical Condor leather sheath. Sits in nice. It's pretty much lightweight. we got to look at these sort of things because people like me, you know, we've got all our fancy stuff. You know, we've got our LT Wright Jess Mix and things like that, but not everybody has $200 to go throwing around so they can get into bushcraft. So I think this is an excellent option for somebody just starting out. So let's put this thing to some wood and see what Will thinks about it too. You know, as of all the knives that Chris you know hands me and says, hey, just do stuff with this, uh, you know, this is one of the better ones in my opinion. You know, this is my style. You know, this isn't trying to reinvent the wheel. This isn't trying to do crazy knife design. This is simple is best. You know, the, and that's, it holds true in the knives that I designed that you guys are going to see really soon. That I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just trying to get a tool that works. And that's what this does. It just works. It's very simple in design. It's very comfortable in design. Nice scanty grind. Uh, looks like got a little bit of a secondary bevel on it. Chris might have done that. Did you, did you sharpen this? It's been through. Yeah, a so. little bit, a tiny bit of a secondary bevel on it. No big deal. Um, the handle, like I said, very simple in design, very comfortable. When companies try to put all these little crazy knobs and all kinds of stuff in handles, that's when they're pinch points and hot spots. You know, this doesn't have any of that. This is just, like I said, very simple, very smooth, very comfortable. Uh, it's not squared. It's rounded so it, it's gonna keep you from fatiguing one of the biggest pet peeves that i have is that when people put things at the bottom at the at the handle throat and this doesn't have anything at the handle throat and the reason why i don't like that is because most of my control comes from the closest i can get the knife to my hand and you can see my hand meets the wood and i still have blade there so i'm going to get all the control that i need for controlled cuts and I also can get powerful cuts this way as well. You see how much wood I'm taking off there. And I'm going through knots. It's whatever I need to. See that knot right there? Let's go through that. Like butter. Just point this out real quick. This blade is extremely sharp too. You're welcome. <laughs> and so from this, from right here, after those powerful cuts, I can get controlled cuts where I need 
if my point is off centered I can kind of work on that area One thing I don't like is land. Chris probably put this on, but a small knife like this, you don't need a lanyard on. You're not going to do chopping or anything with this. This just gets in the way, you know, flies around. <clears throat> does make it a little bit easier to get out of that sheet, though. So, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> but, you know, you see, now I can go 50% more up and get a nice sharp. stick just for whatever I need to do just showing you guys what the blade it can do and then we can you know kill vampires whatever you need to do but that control that I can get from this blade just from how it's designed is what I like yeah get into that cambering layer a little bit and you can start seeing what this knife can really do. So to me, this is a knife knife. It's like cutting is its main purpose, not batoning, not chopping. Not well, anything. it's pretty multi purpose. I mean, if I kind of change my position, can you grab me one of those other sticks? You know, it'll do the job that you're you're wanting it to do. It's just not gonna do. You know, obviously this would probably be the extent that I would take it. You know, I wouldn't if I needed to do something like uh, a baton for a crafting or something like that, you know, then that's what I would do. I, well, I'm not processing firewood with a knife like this. I don't need to process firewood. You know, I just burn, burn whole sticks, burn whole wood. I don't, I don't really understand the whole processing firewood in the in the woods thing. My wood processing tools are saws and axes. You know, I'm not out there splitting wood like a, you know, for a, a home wood burner. Yeah, well, that's for getting it started. Yeah, so something like this, just for for processing kindling, if you're having a a tough time getting kindling, yeah, that's something completely different. But like I said, it will absolutely do that job. Because, you know, this is on the lower price range, but unlike a Mora, this is full tang, as you can see. You know, so I have no worries or even thoughts about the tawny with it, you know, processing wood, small, small wood, stuff like that. And then getting the cuts that I need to actually start the fire. This knife is very smooth, very runs really good. The angle of the, the grind is pretty much perfect in my mind. I mean, this is a really good bushcraft knife. And even though it's, what'd you say, only 50 bucks? Yeah, it's about 55 bucks yeah. on Amazon. You know, the, that price point, so what? This is an awesome knife. You know what I mean? People look at Sometimes people look at knives and like, well, it's not, you know, $150 must not be a great knife. This is a good knife. This is something that I would pack on a regular basis, and I'm really picky about my blades. I always like to check out the spines. Uh, people have different opinions. I like a 90 degree spine. I think that's just one extra part of the knife that becomes useful. So this one seems to have a really good one. I mean, just look how it's taking that bark down right there. So if you're trying to fashion something, or craft something, smooth it out, or get some fine fluff for a tender bundle. I mean, man, this thing is working great. Pressure cut that. Jeez, a butte, Clark. Let me just see how that'll turn out with the.
she's going. She's going. Nice. So this is gonna be a really good fire crafting knife. I mean, just really scrapes that ferro rod good. So yeah, I mean, if you want something on your belt, it's gonna help you do all that fine stuff for getting a fire started. I mean, heck, this one's definitely it. And you can get such a fine touch to it. I'm just barely touching that thing. A little bit harder. That is really nice. I can almost never get feathers that fine when I'm doing it. You know, just because, you know, we've been doing a lot of the smaller tasks with this and the really fine tasks, doesn't mean that this knife can't handle the, the, the hardier tasks. And, you know, Chris was talking about chopping down a tree, you know, he was being kind of cynical about it. I'm like, well, yeah, you, you actually could. I mean, this isn't like a, a huge tree, but it, it's something. And, uh, you know, this, this could definitely handle a job like this. You know, what I was going to do at first was I, I was going to do beaver chews. I was going to do four, but it sunk in there so far. I was like, God, I could probably just do a two chop. So, let's come to the back end of that binder cut and go exactly reverse that right about there. Camera guy, watch out. Go ahead, man. There we go. Megan. Get a, get a close up on that. <laughs> you know, that sapling, being in the position that it was, was just choking these other trees out. So it was a good idea to take those out. Plus, you know, we need wood around this area all the time to, for testing, stuff like that. So, you know, we always can use stuff like this. Just before somebody says, oh, you just chopped down that tree for no reason. A good thing there's about 100 million other ones around here. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's land maintenance, you know. Those trees will grow better for what we just did. We just cleared space for them to grow. Now we have this that we can use for crafting, testing, things like that. Making sneeds. <laughs> sneeds. Sneeds. <laughs> hey, there we go. Oh wait, that's limbed out. It's, it's a sneed, not a sneed. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not up on my. Yeah, we all have Dr. kids. Seuss. <laughs> I just want to see how I can just baton this straight down, like if I want specific sections, don't have a saw, whatnot. See, you know, seeing how it, it bit on that other tree. Well, same tree, but now it's down. Need a harder log to pound on. Cooperate. <laughs> Cooperate.
basically just trying to go the same way as if I was chopping on a smaller scale. I mean, it's doing a number on it. I mean, this definitely seems like a very crafty knife. No doubt about that. And no hot spots in the hand. I think you could do a lot with this thing. I mean, is it cool? Is it sexy? It's just like, oh man, check out my wood law. No, it's a, it's a very plain, simple knife. It's sexy to me. <laughs> That's my style, guys. That's simple as best. But I like how you can just change the pitch ever, ever so slightly, and it's just easy. I mean, for even people like me, which is to say, idiots. I mean, we can. I mean, I can almost never get feathers that fine. All right, I think we've done enough of that. But it, I mean, it is impressive to me. But as I was saying, it's it's. It's nothing that I'm gonna look at and be like, oh my god, this thing's so so nice, so cool looking. It's 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 a very plain, very simplistic, keep it simple, stupid design that works. Uh, no, like Will says, not reinventing the wheel or anything. It's got a very comfortable handle. I'm not a big fan of broomstick handles, but they do work. It's lightweight, it doesn't take up a lot of room on your body. It's not something, you pretty much are stuck with the sheath though. Because of the style of this knife, even a Kydex would still be a friction fit. There's nothing for Kydex to lock into with this knife. So you're gonna have to stay pretty much traditional with this knife, but it, it's, it's not so bad. I mean, just a, for a working knife, hey, I like it, it's, it's, it's fun to use. We have no problem doing any tasks that we try to do with this thing. So do you got anything you want to add about it? I think we've said all we can say about it right now. Yeah, beating a dead horse now. So that's it. Not exactly sure who this is going to go to next in the gauntlet, but if you want to see the other reviews and stay up to date, definitely check out www.thegauntlet.tv. That is the website. That is where all the YouTube videos that we do for the gauntlet are hosted. So also check out Will's website, manisoutdoorsllc.com, and you can find these on the Prepare Mind 101 store at preparemind101.com. All right, guys, we've got a lot more to do, so until next time, see you then.